Ah, Singapore, one of my favorite cities to visit, home to some of the most luxurious and expensive amenities in the world. Singapore is a real showstopper designation if you're looking to impress someone special. And for those fortunate enough to have visited the city, it may come as no surprise that Singapore is one of the most expensive cities on the planet. The city as we know it today is built on very recent history. In fact, the swamp-covered island was formerly known as Pulau Chung, referring to the Malay Pulau Yuzhong, the island at the end of the peninsula. As trade began to take a foothold in the island and the population grew, it became Temasek, or Sea Town. It wasn't until the 1800s that Sir Thomas Stamford Raffles decided to utilize the region for its tremendous accessibility by sea, turning it into a port of call for sea merchants. The city quickly grew from here on. And in 1822, the Raffles Town Plan segmented the city into the four ethnic regions that we still see today. The European Town, Chinatown, Little India, and the Muslim Quarter. The first time I stayed in the city, many, many years ago, I stayed at the Raffles Hotel, named after the founder of modern-day Singapore. The original building started its life as a privately owned beach house in the 1830s before two Armenian brothers converted it into a 10-bedroom, ultra-luxury, high-standard hotel in the late 1880s. Right from the beginning, the hotel would attract only the most wealthy of clientele. In fact, it was one of the first in the region to have installed electric lights and ceiling fans. Countless renovations took place, leading up to the 1900s, which resulted in the hotel many of us are lucky to be familiar with today. From the Ravel's choice of relaxing verandas, guests can enjoy admiring the gardens and the exquisite design inspired by British colonialism. The carefully selected, bespoke furnishings are all crafted from a variety of raw natural materials. Wood, stone, glass, fabric, and some metals help to create a feeling of effortless elegance. Guests can also partake in a Singapore Sling, a gin-based cocktail that was dreamt up by bartender Nijam Tong Boon at the raffle's very own Long Bar, long before the clear spirit became a local favorite. Early guests to the hotel and fellow appreciators of the raffle's calming ambience included writers Somerset Morgom, Joseph Conrad, and Rudyard Kipling. More recently, the hotel shut its doors for two whole years. From 2017, a major renovation saw the addition of 12 rooms, raising the count to 115. The restaurants and bars were transformed, while the theater became a more accommodating ballroom. A new marble floor was installed, a simple but costly addition that helped tie the hotel back to its original days. Today, a pair of presidential suites named after the Armenian brothers, the Sarkis and Sir Stamford Raffles, top the list at the Bourgois Hotel. Both instill a very humbling feeling, focusing on comfort over extravagance. Inside the 260 square meters, meters are a pair of bedrooms, a living room, a dining room, a marble-coated bathroom, and a private veranda. The cost? $7,500 per night. A favorite among many, the Raffles retains subtly and manages effortless comfort. But for many, it just doesn't shout loud enough, and these people are likely to stay at the Marina Bay Sands Resort. When this piece of modern art was completed in 2010, it was home to the most expensive standalone casino property in the world at the eye-watering cost of $7 billion. Just a stone's throw away from Singapore's 120 miles of coastline, the spectacular design features three 55-story towers on which an awe-inspiring ship-shaped platform rests. The one-hectare Sky Park can hold almost 4,000 guests, 191 meters above ground level, plus a few more in the 146 meter long infinity pool. Made of 191 metric tons of stainless steel, this pool can hold almost 1.5 million liters of water. It's only from ground
ground level that one can truly admire it as the world's largest cantilevered platform, which extends seven meters beyond the North Tower. Many people like to explore downstairs, which features a 74,000 square meter mall and a 120,000 square meter convention exhibition center. The world famous mall, known as The Shops, is home to some of the most expensive shops in the world. We're talking Chanel, Breitling, and Hermes. I personally prefer to stay away from the crowds and make a private reservation at one of the six celebrity chef restaurants run by Gordon Ramsay, Wolfgang Puck, Tetsuya Wakuda, Mario Batali, David Thompson, and Daniel Bouloud. Elsewhere in the complex, there is a museum, a theater, and a casino boasting 500 tables and 1,600 slot machines. Although there are more than 2,500 rooms, nothing compares with the range-topping Chairman Suite. At $17,000, it's the most expensive room in the city. Inside the 600 square meters are three guest rooms a master suite with his and hers bathrooms, a pair of living rooms with a baby grand piano, a kitchenette and dining area, and a study room. No less than three furnished balconies make up the exterior, while a private gym, massage room, sauna, and steam room complete the relaxation amenities. Just like the Raffles pair of range-topping suites, this suite comes with 24-hour access to a private butler. Singapore's most expensive restaurants can be found inside the shops at Marina Bay Sands. $500 per person is the going rate. Waku Gin serves up food cooked by a private chef based on a European and Japanese fusion. The journey ends with guests being escorted into a private room for dessert, shared with unrivaled views of the Marina Bay itself. It is recommended that guests book months in advance for this extravagant experience. And when I'm looking for a break from the city, I lose myself in the Botanic Gardens. The 161-year-old tropical paradise is today a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It comprises three gardens, including a six-hectare rainforest area, one of the first of its kind within a city boundary. The Ginger Garden showcases some of the world's ginger plants, of which there are known 1,600 species. Fans of flora will surely appreciate the national Orchid Garden, a charming and tranquil environment that supports visitors outside of the city's hustle and bustle. I like to watch the birds and insects interact with nature in the old colonial plantation bungalow from a nice city bench. Knowing that children and families are able to learn about the importance of flora and fauna inside the garden's library and classroom is truly inspiring. While various breeding centers instill confidence that hard work is being done to ensure these plants' futures. Exercise and holiday are antonymous to many, but golf bridges this gap perfectly, a way to keep active. The sport also helps holiday makers to connect with their surroundings and interact with fellow golfers. And boy, does Singapore spoil you for choice. The Serapong course of the Sentosa Golf Club frequently ranks favorite golf course by fans of the sport. Occupying around a third of the island off the coast of Singapore's mainland, it sits under the watchful eye of Fort Serapong, once part of the city's sea defense. Voted the best in Southeast Asia and also the world's best golf club at the world's golf awards, the history of the golf course is far from boring. Opened in 1982, the course underwent an expensive transformation in 2006, with state-of-the-art irrigation being at the forefront of the work, at a cost of $9 million. It wasn't all plain sailing though. Lots of work went into making the golf course what it is today. Hole 5, for example, lies where seawater once stretched up to 12 meters deep. 3 million cubic meters of sand was needed for stabilizing this portion of reclaimed land. I'm particularly fond of the downtown skyline that frames many of the course's holes, while others sit in shades casted by palm trees lining the coastline. The persistent sea breeze makes some of the holes, including one 
385 meter section a challenge for even myself. When you think of Singapore, scuba diving may not be your first thought. The heavy boat traffic and churned up waters don't suggest optimal diving conditions, but that simply isn't the case. The Sudong Wreck, for example, lies just 15 meters below the surface almost entirely intact. Hulao Hantu remains a favorite spot for divers who want to see a variety of corals, sea slugs, turtles, and even sharks. But this is also one of the busiest sites due to its easy accessibility. I prefer Paolo Jean for quieter dives, a location that plays home to reef sharks and rays, so be careful there. For me, a holiday must revolve around a good night's sleep, exquisite food, and some gentle activities to keep the mind occupied. But Singapore isn't just a giant holiday designation. It's also a bustling city with over five and a half million inhabitants squeezed into its 275 square miles of land. Currently the third most densely populated city on the planet, it's easy to see how living here could be expensive. Out of the United States and the UK, Hey, Singapore holds the lowest average salary at $65,000. The UK and US are at $73,000 and $81,000 respectively. With land at such a premium, Singapore residents spend the most on housing. One square meter of city center property costs an average of $19,844, a figure which is halved outside of the center. That's up to 30% of an average worker's salary. The UK pays just 7% at $5,631 per square meter inside the city and $4,000 outside, which itself looks expensive next to the United States average city center prices of $3,496, just 4% of an average salary. Singapore then is seemingly more than seven times more expensive to buy property when it compares with the United States based on average salaries. Of course, the cost cost of living revolves around tens if not hundreds of other factors, but today we will resort to comparing just housing and food. While it may shock you to find that house prices are so high in Singapore, food is just $1 more per month than the United States at $342, while the British feed themselves on just $236. Countless studies have placed Singapore in the top 10, the top 5, and the leading position as the most expensive city in the world, but we can expect these sorts of figures to fluctuate frequently. Regardless, whether it's just a holiday or your dream of one day living in Singapore, it's true to say that the city is one of the most expensive and opulent cities in the world. So what about you guys? Have you ever been to Singapore and are you looking to travel there in the future? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe and turn on the bell icon to receive notifications for my next video. As always, I'm Mr. Luxury, Pip Pip the Doodly Doo.